how are you all doing welcome back to the youtube channel it's your favorite village boy mr ghana baby right here and i'm back again with another eye-opening video i feel like i live in ghana but i've been so blind all this while you know why i'm a big fan of cocoa products and you know that i got 50 acres of uh, cocoa farm and i never knew that cocoa has another additional value all I knew was that you can only use cocoa for chocolate, can only use cocoa for Milo, but I never knew you can actually use cocoa for wine. And the person doing this is actually a Ghanaian in Ghana. And so many Ghanaians are not talking about it. You know what? Before I show you the man behind this innovation, do me a favor, like the video. It's very important. Like this video, share so that every African can have a piece of it. Before I even start this interview, I want to tell you, are you cool? Uh, in the Volta region, how do you guys say, are you cool? Me, I a doji. Me, Wela a doji. Mia a wela. So on behalf of all Africans, we say Mia wela a doji. You're doing something that I think the whole country needs to celebrate you. Do you know that? Uh, well, if you say so, how can I say? I never knew that you can actually get wine from cocoa, cashew, and what next? Co uh, coffee. Coffee. How did you come about with this? Yeah, you can get wine from most fruits, actually. Uh, if I, interestingly, it is scientifically proven that we should be able to make better wines from cocoa than uh, grape, grape, because cocoa has more of the antioxidants, uh, that are as, uh, uh, some of the ingredients that you will need in wine. Mm. But you can find cocoa everywhere in Ghana. You can find cocoa mostly, mostly from the forest zone, uh, in the forest zone, everywhere in Ghana, you can find cocoa. Uh, are you doing a large-scale production or a small uh, no, scale? No, we are still at a nascent level. Um, this is a, really a hobby that we are trying to see if we can uh, commercialize. Uh, so, which means no one is supporting what you're doing then? Uh, at the moment, no. Uh, we're hoping for some few things in the pipeline. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this as a, a hobby for about eight years. But we started making trickle sales maybe um, four, four years ago, from four years ago. Let me understand here. Yeah, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby. Now you said I should call myself Mr. African, African Baby. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> African Baby. Um, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, my main job is I'm a lecturer at Technical University and I teach entrepreneurship. So uh, oh. what inspired me to begin this is um, we've been criticized for um, the way we teach economics and entrepreneurship. So we wanted to demonstrate to um, our students that it is possible to make premium products from local things around us. So I decided to set this up as a, a sort of a modern a model business for my students to uh, emulate. Uh, this also explains the reason why we have not scaled up on a on a, uh, a bigger scale until until now. Mm. Now, yeah, uh, was a hobby. Wine making was a hobby. I pick up from Scotland. Over there, they make wine called country wines, which means wines that are made from other fruits rather than wine. Mm. Uh, so they are able to make wine from strawberry, blackberry, black currants, the fruit, and sometimes banana, the fruit they have, uh, they have, there are no grape. So when I came, I applied the same idea. And then through the sciences, we got to know that cocoa is one of the fruits that we have in Canada that can make a, a, a magnificent wine as well. What, what were you doing in Scotland? I was studying. How long? I studied in Germany and Scotland for uh, six years before returning to Ghana. So you're back home Yeah, now. I've been back in Ghana for about 10 years now. Would you say that 
it's possible to make it in uh, uh, Ghana or it's possible to make it in um, the West? It's, uh, yeah, it's possible to do things in Ghana, as you said in your introduction, is a system. Uh, yes, we're talking about this wine as a cocoa wine, but the truth again is all the packaging materials have to come from outside, and that makes it, so that makes it expensive. So, I um, mean, sometimes, um, yes, the raw material chunk of the things are here, but some of the other things you need to turn into an attractive product, you still have to import. And this is not only in Ghana, that's how manufacturing is all over all over the world. So we got to make the system uh, easier so that if you have to produce and manufacture, you can get your inputs quite easily and, and not too expensive so that your product can be competitive on the international market. So which means the raw materials um, the wine itself, everything was produced in Ghana. Yeah, in Ghana, everything from scratch from so, Ghana. Well, what did you but import? the bottles are imported, uh, the corks, the corks that are in there are imported, the seal on top is, is imported. Which makes it like it's gonna make the whole product expensive then. Yeah, it makes the product expensive because the uh, the, the factors you have when you are importing uh, raw materials into Ghana. Uh, particularly for small businesses who are not producing on large scale, it's so expensive. Uh, it's so expensive. The packaging takes about 70% of our cost of production. 70%? Yeah. On this notice, I want to ask what are the major challenges that you face as a, a small scale business? Yeah, because you are producing on a, a small scale, uh, um, the, the, the name of the game in manufacturing and for packaging in particular is the volumes. So if you are if you're ordering bottles, labels, corks in volumes, mm. you get it at a, a lower price. Mm. But if you're importing it on a uh, in small small quantity, it's, it's, it ends up being so expensive uh, for you. But the only way you can get a material is also to import uh, to import it. I know cocoa to be non-alcoholic. Yeah, the fruit is, it's not a cocoa that is uh, alcohol. Cocoa, once you start, you crack the cocoa pots, it will start fermenting right away. And, and that fermentation turns into uh, alcohol, the byproduct of the fructus and uh, the yeast uh, uh, is the alcohol. So that, that means that you extract the cocoa beans from the cocoa pod? We extract cocoa pulps from the cocoa pods uh, cocoa, uh, cocoa pods and leave the beans. So it's the, the pulp that is used to make white wine. But if you have to make red wine, the pulp is white. The, 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 there, is, there is some cream mm. between the cocoa shelf and uh, uh, the, the, the chocolate itself. When you crack the cocoa, cocoa beans, um, there is um, a cream in between the shell and what you eat as a chocolate. Mm. That, is, that is pink and it's full of uh, tannin, or, or people will say polyphenol scientifically. Mm. That's how we extract to make red wine from, and it normally produces a, a natural rosé wine, uh, which we turn into red wine. I, I'm a bit confused, and I believe that a lot of people watching us might also be confused a confused little bit. Confused because I'm too scientific here. Too, too scientific. Okay. Okay. So, you know what, I, I want to see a bit so of the production. If, if, no Is problem. It so, if you yeah. have... So, I feel... Cocoa is actually an interesting fruit. Uh, I guess it is one of the... Again, I'm going science. <laughs> one of the uh, pharmacologically active foods you can find. Yeah. So if you take the cocoa pods, it's a fruit. Yeah. The, the, the beans in it have creams around it. Yeah, that cream is white. Yeah. You, 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 you take that cream, yeah. you extract the cream, and it's like a juice. Yeah. So you introduce it into that juice, yeah. and that makes white wine like you see in a glass here. I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. Yet, so so like you see in a glass here, it's a, it's a, a, white, a white wine. Uh, so we can make white wine from the cocoa puffs and still sell our beans or turn the beans into you... chocolate. Oh. So the beans are just byproducts. But if you want to make red wine, 
the 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 pops you get there is is you it would produce a a, a, a white wine for you. Mm. The red wine, there is something in the cocoa beans itself, in between the the beans, and uh, in between the beans and this shell, there's a cream pink, uh, a pink cream, okay. which you have to ferment a bit, and then you can extract it from the beans. Uh, uh, from the beans, and that that color is like the juice. So pink, that's the pink. yeah, the pink color is like the juice. This one, it, yeah, it drains away from cocoa when you are processing it. It doesn't stay with the cocoa when you dry it because it's a juice. So once you ferment the cocoa beans, it becomes liquid and you draw from the you draw from the beans. So you still have your uh, your chocolate or your mm. cocoa beans. So we are able to ferment that again over one year to turn it into a red wine. Over a year? Did you say over a year? Over a year, all the wild wines you have to... Yeah, first, you produce the wine, you get alcohol you want within two months, but you need to allow the wine to mellow and clear, be beautiful in the glass, and it takes about a year. Can we see one of those like where you've... Um, you have so that is the means it makes the process capital intensive, you need to have capacity vessels to keep your so wine. Which means that you need You're not doing anything with it, you, need just, you just need to store it. So, which means you, you do yearly production then? Yeah, yeah. So, the, we produce when the fruit is available. So, it's now cocoa season, so we are producing wine from cocoa. When the cocoa is over, we get to cashew season. We produce wine from uh, cashew. But this looks like chocolate though. This is chocolate. Yeah, that is what is actually called chocolate. Uh, chocolate is not chocolate bar. Uh, this is uh, uh, chocolate. Uh, it's, it's, it's um, when you that's why we call our nuts raw chocolate nut. Mm. Uh, you, this is, this is the real chocolate, nothing is added. You eat if you eat this, you get all that cocoa has to offer. If you eat chocolate bar, and um, if you buy a bar of chocolate yeah. from the Western market, you'll be lucky to have two of these beans in it. You know, like. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of um, things that don't have sugar. Bitter, yeah. Ah, so... I'll tell you what to do. If you don't want to... Uh, if you eat it like this, you don't get a bitterness. But if you peel it, you get a bitterness. The bitterness is the tannin or the medicine mm -hmm. in cocoa. So if you eat it raw like this? Yeah. If you treat it that way, you will not hear a bitterness immediately. No, it's true. I thought they add sugar to cocoa beans so that have no, to um, taste. No, we, we, we roast this in a... Um, uh, a sort, sort of way to hide the, the bitterness is still there, but we hide it. You finish it in it before you feel it. Ha! Ah. Mm -hmm. ah, oh my God, like... Uh, I'm gonna get back to you after a bit. These are not bottles? No, they are pouches. So yeah, they are like dispensers. You dispense the wine of um, that uh, instead of keeping wines in a bottle that is quite expensive. Mm. Sometimes wine, wines are packed in a, a box or a pouches. I mean, um, right now it's hobby and uh, it's also more commercial. Yeah. Where do we see where do you want to see this wine factory in the next uh, five years? But I would like to be producing wines from here and selling all over, uh, all over Ghana abroad. Um, a few, bot few bottles in the supermarket or dispensers in the supermarket uh, in Europe. Uh, it's, it's fine. How, how, how do we make this dream come true then? Or what is hindering the dream for not happening this year, next so year? We need... We need uh, uh, some sort of uh, promoters, uh, investors and promoters to come on board, help us take the wines to where we are not able to send them to. Well, for promoters, I'm here, so you shouldn't worry about that. <laughs> but you need the investors. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what, if you have seen the potential, I've seen what this can do for Ghana and the entire Africa, and uh, I believe that this man really needs our support. He is an entrepreneur, lecturer, so he knows how to, I mean, do businesses. He has been doing it in classroom, but decided to 
come out and let the student have somebody that they can look up to i believe that i'm also here and i can look up to him so investing your money into his business is something that i know that you're gonna um yen the profit in future so do me a favor uh, reach out to him directly i'm not even gonna have anything to do with it and talk to him if uh, you guys can we talk about how much percentage what he needs and then let's take it from there um uh, I want to ask you a question here. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a message for Africans, what would that message be? Well, we have a lot of potentials, and uh, with uh, the room was not built in a day. Uh, once we continue to work hard, we will, uh, we will get there. The room was not built in a day. Yeah, but I, I realized that all the uh, equipment that you use are more like a basic equipment that. Yes, yeah, yeah, because this is an, an indigenous um, business and it's always a good idea if you are starting a business not to go to, uh, well, because we are operating in an environment where market is small, uh, it's difficult to build volumes. So you, if you bring a sophisticated machine, you will need uh, a lot of uh, technicians, engineers, uh, maintain them, pay them before you can operate, mm. and you might not be able to afford, so you get best. But small, small machines don't, you can all just use them by yourself. Get to a stage until uh, you think you need to build volumes, then you can automate. Would you, would you love to partner with Casa Fraco? Well, I think wine making is slightly different from uh, distillery. Uh, the they, they, they distill wine, uh, they distill alcohol. Uh, here we make wine slowly, so they are slightly different uh, different processes. Yes, yes. But in terms of the channel where they sell their drinks, I think there's a lot to, we can uh, partner with or collaborate with. If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? See one thing or change one thing in Africa. What will you change? Well, well, I don't have a dream to change things in Africa. I don't think I. Um, I've even thought of I've even thought about that, really? but I, th I think Africans are resilient. Uh, we 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 just have to continue to work hard, improve upon our mentality. Because if we don't use our own things, and and promote it and accept it, nobody else will come and buy it, and and pay. If you keep admiring Western things, Western culture, Western products, and not admiring ours, patronizing ours, uh, we will not add value to it. We cannot add value to it. Uh, it looks like most of the great things we have, the value is being added by Westerners. So without them, we don't have value. So we got to be using our own things and be proud of what we can do, what we got. Then uh, we work hard and then we'll get there. Where can we find your wine? My wines are available largely in uh, who in the main supermarkets in Ho, Stadium Gate uh, supermarket and something wine shops. In Accra, uh, we are at um, Kanda Estate, Joy Wine. We are also at Sai Wine at Kant, uh, Cantonment. Uh, because we we actually a small business, we tend to sell more directly to uh, customers. You can always uh, get in touch with us. And then we deliver to we deliver to you where you are. We are making effort to be in a shop to enter the shop, uh, the shop mall, um, the Accra mall. Mm. And we hope to be in Accra mall this year. Can, uh, are you exporting here? No, no, no. Too small to be uh, yeah, too small to be exporting here. Uh, but a lot of uh, tourists who are in Ghana uh, like our wine, and they come and get a bottle or two as a souvenirs home. If you are living in Ghana, let's do this for him. Um, let's make sure that the wines that he has in here, we finish it on. It's a must. You know that I don't beg. It's by force. So <laughs> I'm going to call you after one week if I upload, it, if I upload this video. Yeah. And if you tell me that, oh, I want to know if there, there is still wine or there yeah. are no more wine. Okay. I want to say thank you so much for okay. sharing your story with me. And I really appreciate okay. it. Okay, thank you. Yeah.